Now we're going to talk about sunny plants and when I planted this border or any borders are planted I always look where the sun is and this is the sunny side so this is the sunny side our side is the shady side so sunny plants here and plants that will tolerate shade such as London Pride on the far side now generally there's more plants that will grow in, in, shade, in sunny places that will grow in shady places so the biggest problem is to get plants for shade there's never a problem getting plants for sun so it's, this, is all, this is the easy part the sunny part is the easy part now why, what would happen if I planted this in shade? It's an important question. What would happen if I planted that in the shade? Because people would say, well, well it's going to die. No, it won't die. What will happen is it will go for the sun, it will reach for the sun, and it will become loose and floppy, and sometimes hardly ever flower. And when it's in the sun, it's tight, and it looks healthier, because that's what it was designed for, because it came from a sunny place. That's an Achillea, and all Achilleas, well, by and large, they have these flat flower heads, top flower heads, even though they're members of the daisy family. They're not a typical daisy. And beside it we have a plant from Turkey, which is a sunny place. Turkish Oregano, it's lovely purple flowers. So we're going to have the purple here, the dark purple. We're going to have the yellow here and the yellow there. And that, that's a GM. GM Mrs. Bradshaw. And if that is deadheaded, now when you deadhead this GM, you don't take individual flowers out take the entire flower stalk like this and like that again and new ones come up to the middle see the new ones there they come up to the middle it's a gene mrs bradshaw it's not a long-lived plant but it will that will be in flower in october from now till october if i deadhead now we go over here it's a classic sunny plant catmint this one is six hills giant and it's just much better in sun if it's in shade like i said with the other ones it's floppy and untidy and a, it, it flops apart and there's a sort of a hole in the middle and it just looks doesn't look right if it's sunny it's tight it's good and here we have fennel bronze fennel and we cut a leaf and see this leaf what's interesting about this you can see this leaf if you blew, blow at this leaf blow through it so this plant is designed to be on windy spots. The wind can get through it. So generally, windy spots are also spots with no shelter, which means they're sunny spots. So a plant like this, by looking at that plant, you can nearly always say that's for the sun. Now, on the other hand, if you had a gunner like this, and blow at that, that's like a sail of a ship. That's designed to catch the light, and that can be in a shadier place. We can see sun, shade. There you go. It's facing south here, due south. We have pine trees behind. That's a Stotts pine. And they suck all the water out, so it's dry, sunny conditions. And that's why I, these were only planted a short while, these three. And uh, rock rose assist us. And they have to be in the sun, because once again, it keeps them tight. And they flower, flower for ages. Another really good plant for, for sun is, or are, the Orient poppies. And this one, this is a mistake even us professional gardeners make. We forget to take the names of the plants down. Now, I don't, I know this is an Orient poppy, but I've forgotten its name. It's one of the nicest ones I've ever got. It's not too tall, because sometimes they're very tall and heavy, they flop. This never flops. It flares for quite a long time, and it's the most amazing shade of uh, you know, peach. The men are great at colors, you know, but I think it's peach. And when it finishes flowering, See the persicaria behind is going to come over and we'll just, before, as the persicaria comes across, we just cut this to the ground and it will flush up with some fresh foliage and the persicaria will take over. Because that's the problem with, with oriental poppies, when they finish they leave a gap. My final plant for sunny spot, now this plant as it happens will grow in, in semi shade but it's far better in sun, is sulphur clover. Now this is quite in a an unusual plant because in theory it shouldn't be up to much because it's very like the lawn clover which people don't particularly like just a bigger form but overall everyone is fascinated by this plant and they love this plant now it's interesting i'm supposed to know a lot about plants but i bought this in plant 
years ago in a plant sale, a uh, car boot sale, I bought this plant and I never knew what it was and I happened to be watching the telly one night, I think it was Gardener's World, and up it came and I said, oh, sulfur clover, trifolium aurelucum, and I knew it forever then. What I, how I deal with this plant is when it finishes flowering and there's lots of new flowers to come with it in about six weeks time, I do this. Just do that. And all the dead petals fall off and you have the nice seed heads which go right in till the new year. Thank you for having the good grace for watching me and I say that advisedly because this plant is called Catinus Grace. It's amazing. It's, you could say it's uh, amazing grace. And when it's very sunny, we actually do occasionally get sun in Ireland. This, it's such a thin leaf that the sunshine actually goes through the leaf. Now it's a big plant, it needs space, it likes sun, and it likes shelter. Uh, Cotinus grace, recommended, highly, highly recommended. One of the nicest purple plants you can get. And don't forget, subscribe to my channel and you're supposed to do that for some reason I don't know why but I'm a gardener so we I suppose we always point at the ground because the secrets in the earth